Hey everyone, hope you're having a fantastic weekend. It's Sunday morning, so that's a great time just to go over the charts and have a quick scan, see where the major directions are for this week, look at the news articles and see if there's any trades setting up for us. It's part of my weekly routine just to have a bit of relaxation time on Sunday, go through the charts and just make sure that um, I'm fully prepared for the week ahead and so that nothing catches me out on Monday morning. So as always, let's just start with the news articles. So as we scan through the news articles on Forex Factory for the calendar for the week, we can see there's a fair bit coming up on Monday morning, but nothing of any significant note. As we get into Tuesday morning, we have the Australian Bank announcement on the interest rates, expected to be remaining the same at 0.1%. So that's very much predicted and probably factored into the current price. So I don't see any major changes in the Aussie dollar this week. As we go down Wednesday, we have the the budget in the UK, so it could be any number of announcements coming through. As always, there's lots of news leaks in the week before around tax rises, stimulus packages. But until it's all announced on the Wednesday, we're not quite sure. So again, I probably won't do too much trading around that time, just in case there are some big announcements from Rishi Sunak. So on Thursday, we have OPEC meetings. Who knows what they're going to announce around oil, so I'll probably stay well away from oil for this week. And obviously getting into Friday, here we have the, the big announcements around the, the US non-farm payroll figures. So that's essentially the, the unemployment. And looking previously, the figures haven't been fantastic. And who knows what the latest stimulus package from Joe Biden will have on the, the employment figures coming out of the US on Friday. It's always worth noting that price doesn't do much in the morning on the Friday. It can just be very static as people wait for this announcement because it is such a big one. And then from the afternoon, there can be any number of reasons for continuation, massive spikes or huge reversals, depending on how the information gets digested by the traders when they come online from the US on about 2.30 on Friday afternoon. So we start here looking at FTSE on the daily chart. We can see it's been a bit of a, a choppy week for it. It starts off quite good with the price increasing. And then obviously, for whatever reason, price started to fall and pull back into sort of the moving average zones. But we can see there's still very good support at the 6,300 level, so it's still a wave away from that. And there is still potential for this to easily break back up through, create a new high and surge back up through up to the 7,000. Again, this will depend on the, the US markets this week, as we will probably be led quite heavily by the sentiment coming out of the US. If we go down a time frame on the FTSE to the four hour chart, we can see here the, the big rally up beginning of the week. And as the price started to come back down, it has now formed almost like a double top. So we've got a high here at the 6,790 mark. We have another high here at 6,700. As price has come down, it's broken through this kind of support level of 6,580 and it's continued to go down. Now it's getting in this sort of congestion zone level here at the 6,480 level. If it breaks through that, then we could see this come down all the way down to the 6,300 by the end of the week. Again, because I'm generally trading this on an intraday basis, I'll be looking down on a much lower time frame between the one hour and the 15 minute chart, looking for the, the entries there. It's good to see the overall trend direction of the FTSE is still going up, but it has had a bit of a pullback this week with a sell off on the Friday. So looking at the S&P 500, this is obviously the, the dominant global indices and obviously the majority of the world's ones follow where this one goes. And as we can see, it has pulled off from the all time highs this week and started to pull back down. It's still in a very good uptrend. And unless it breaks this level here around about the 3,670 level, I'd still continue this being in a strong bullish uptrend. So if price continues to rise on the S&P 500, that's why I'm fairly confident the price will be dragged along with the FTSE this week. So move on to Forex. Here we have the, the dollar index essentially showing a fairly bit of support, uh, bouncing around these levels at the moment and starting to show a bit of strength towards the end of last week. It hasn't broken up through the, the, the high of the previous week. So again, we're still in this predominantly downtrend. If we start to see some breaks up through this sort of 9200 level, then I would see a lot more strength in the dollar and expect some of the currency pairs to move quite a lot. It's a good idea to keep one eye on the dollar index if you are trading a lot of Forex, just in case it does start to gain some strength and some momentum. Therefore, you don't want to get caught out on the wrong side of a currency trade. So we can see on the euro dollar, it's been a very choppy week for it again with a big sell off on Friday. And even before that on the Thursday, we have here sort of a high test bar. Uh, price not breaking out through this sort of 122 level and coming back into this sort of sideways range. 
I would expect a bit more pressure on the euro this week just based on a lot of the news that's coming out of the eurozone countries with their vaccination rollout not happening as much as it could have done and countries going into more of a lockdown over the next two to three months. Again, if we look on the, the four hour chart for the, the euro dollar, we can see it's very much going a sideways range bound now with potential some pressure for it to come back down to the sort of 119 level if it comes back to this part of the bottom end of the channel. There's no clear direction on this currency pair for me at the moment, so I'm definitely going to leave it well alone this week. So here we have the British pound US dollar and as you can see, it's been in a very, very strong bullish uptrend for quite a while now and that always has to come to an end at some point. It did push into very, very strong zones, new highs of the 142 mark in the middle of the week before selling off towards the end. That was expected just on the very nature of getting overextended getting too much buying coming in and just sort of coming back down to some natural levels. If we zoom out a little bit on this one to the weekly chart we can see again price really did start to get into this level here of uh, previous highs of around about the, the 142 mark. It had the potential to get up to 144 and I still think that's possible in the next couple of weeks but there is going to be a bit of a breathing space for that to happen. So just looking at the four hour chart here on the GBP, we can see as it pushed out into the new highs this week, it pulled back down, which is obviously what it would normally do, take a little bit of a breather. It failed to make a new high and therefore came back down. It broke down through this classic head and shoulders pattern and as a reversal came all the way back down to this zone here around about the 139. There is definitely some potential for it to break back down to the 138 level, based on the fact that this is where it broke out recently and obviously that level of resistance is now coming new level of support. There's nothing really in the way to stop it getting to that level so I would expect it to see a bit of selling pressure this week and especially on Wednesday when the Chancellor makes his announcement on the, the UK budget. So possibly for the early part of this week I'd be looking for some potential shorts on GBP USD but as we go through the week and momentum potentially comes back into a more positive position then we might change that into looking for longs. So a quick look here at the dollar yen, as we can see from last week it's pulled back down into the 105 mark and pretty much this entire week it's been a very much a positive upward ascendancy. It's broken out to new highs, broken through the 106, definitely some potential early in the week to get up to 107. I think at that point we're going to see a pullback and if it hopefully continues this uptrend it's only going to pull back into the, the 105, 106 level. This could just be reflective in the strength of the dollar over the past week. But looking at it in the longer term, this is looking at more a positive bullish outlook for the dollar yen. Even going into the, the hourly chart on dollar yen, we can see it's fairly bullish still. There's no real sign of any reversal patterns. It's breaking into new highs and not making any newer lows. Moving on to gold now, on the daily chart, we can see that the downward channel is being respected by price. So over the past couple of weeks, price has been making significant lower lows on a regular pattern. And it's broken down to that previous low of the... 1734 and on Friday it broke all the way back down to 1717. So there is potential if we are going to continue in this channel for price to come back down to around about 1690 but I believe looking at it uh, what it's done over the past couple of weeks is we might see some more buying coming in over this week and price come back up to the $1800 mark. So the reason for me to be a bit more positive on gold this week is purely just looking at the four hour chart and we can see when it's had the recent sell off it has recovered quite considerably but not breaking into any new highs. It's sold off again, recovered and sold off again. Now this week it's dropped down from around about 18.15 all the way down to 17.20ish so it's a fairly big almost a hundred dollar move. So potentially it could rally 50, 60 dollars this week so getting back up to the 1780 to 1800 mark and that level there that's where I think the sellers will come back in and push price all the way back down below $1700 in the next two three weeks. Quick scan through oil here again very much in the upward ascendancy price pulled back in the last couple of days of the week seemed to be a bit of a sell-off generally across all of the instruments here. It's a bit clearer on the four hour chart where the, the trend is going as we can see we've pushed up to new highs of around about $64 per barrel pulling back down which is what we'd normally expect with price having a bit of a breather and at the level here it's not broken to any new lows providing it stays above around about $60.5 to $61 if the price stays above there we are still looking for a bullish uptrend and especially if there's going to be some open meetings this week who knows they might want to see price go higher and announce some restrictions in oil production and therefore price could 
bounce back up to 64 and even $67 per barrel. So taking a scan through Bitcoin now, I said last week that prices pushed out to all-time highs around about the $58,000 per coin and I'd expect it to price to pull back, which it has done. At this zone here, it looks much more of a comfortable place to start buying in again and seeing another surge. But as always with Bitcoin, things do tend to repeat themselves quite well. And if we look at when price broke out from its previous highs around about the 20,000, it had pretty much a $23,000 price increase all the way up to this high here, around about the $43,000 mark. It then consolidated from that high, it pulled back around about $13,000, $14,000 before going into a sort of sideways pattern for breaking out. And again, when we see where it broke out to that channel at the $35,000 mark, it did add another 23,000 to it to get all the way back up to the 58,000. It's now pulled back into this sort of 14,000 mark off, 13, 14,000 dollars off the price. So that's where I'm expecting it to repeat the exact same pattern over here and go sideways for a number of weeks. Now, if that does happen and we start to get a bit of a squeeze on price, we could potentially see this break through the, the 50,000 mark in the next sort of two or three weeks. And if we added another 23, 25,000 to the price, then we could see this 75, $80,000 per coin. Again, that's just my opinion. It's still very speculative and anything could happen. We could see a complete crash on this and come all the way back down to 20,000. It's so volatile right now. So looking at some stocks now and Lloyds Bank, they announced a, a huge loss this week, which didn't seem to dent the stock price too much and has still remained around about the 40 pence per share. It's now had two or three touches in that zone, but it hasn't broken out. So resistance is being respected quite nicely and it's not broken that level for well over a year. So personally, I'm still waiting for price to pull back into the low 30 pences before starting to buy, but it's always one just to keep an eye on for myself. So lastly, just a quick look at Tesla. Obviously, they've been in a massive, massive rise over the past couple of years. Now, predominantly, they've been able to produce the number of cars they want to produce and sell every single one of them. And with the EV becoming the dominant cars that people want to buy, we can see that's why the price has been surging up all the way through. It's always good to look behind the value of the stocks and see where their profits are actually coming from. And it's clear that Tesla makes no money from selling cars. They actually make the majority of their profits from selling regulatory credits to other states within the US. Who knows how sustainable that's going to be going forward, but that's obviously not a business model to be supported long term. You would expect them to be making significantly more profits from selling cars, but they still do that. They need to still get their production rates incredibly much higher than where they are now. So that's my roundup for the week ahead. Who knows if anything is going to come true? I'm no psychic, but it's always good just to do that sort of quick analysis to see where the major trends are, what support levels are going to come into the market, and just get ready and excited for what the markets might give this week. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll do it again the same next week.